we'll just go with it. We'll just get going. Um, so I thought maybe I'll start introduce myself a little bit. I know a few of you, but not all of you. Um, let's see. I currently work at Raritan Learning Cooperative, which is in central New Jersey in the USA. I don't know if there's anybody here who's not in the U.S. So it gets a little U.S. centric in parts when in discussing these sorts of things, but um, I'll. Uh, you know, we'll try and point that out and note if anyone needs that. So anyway, so I'm in uh, central New Jersey. I've been at Raritan Learning Cooperative a year. Before that, I was 10 years at Princeton Learning Cooperative. And we're small SDE centers with about 30 kids, uh, teenagers. So we're 11 to 19. I think we had one kid turn 20 one time. So, uh, but most of the kids are in the 15, 16, 17 age range. Um, and um, I'm also on the board of Liberated Learners, so uh, people who are interested to um, create centers. Um, we work we work with folks to create centers like the ones that we have in our network. Um, these sort of small SDE centers. They, they're not just for teens; it could be younger kids as well. Um, and um, and before that, before I sort of got involved with all of this, I homeschooled my kids. They're now in their 30s. And so it's part of the homeschooling community in, in my town um, since about 2000. And mostly working with you sort of the teenagers, the older kids in that in that time frame as well. Um, so this this session was requested. So that that's pretty nice. People are interested to talk about sort of like how you can be adults and part of kids' lives as they transition to to adults, uh, to adulthood. Um, and so there may be people here who have a particular topic in mind, and um, I really encourage us to, you know, spend time on the things that we want to know the most about, because um, I think there's a lot here we could talk about. We could delve pretty deeply into some parts of it. Um, so I encourage you, like, so I've structured it. I put a little bit of structure around it you know, to help us like move through it, but really it's quite open-ended where we could, so we could talk about things, things as, as you want. So, um, and in terms of like introducing ourselves, maybe what we'll do is, um, well, let's just get started and I'm gonna encourage you all to um, sort of um, offer a response to um, a first question. And maybe in doing that, you could introduce yourself as you, um, as, as you offer a response. And um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen uh, if I can uh, get this done correctly. Um, all right, I need to go, let's see, over and uh, um, just, because what I wanna do here, this is so frustrating, so Sometimes you have to move these things around. I can't get to it. Um, I was hoping I could just make things a little bit smaller. This, will this move? I think I can move this, yeah. Yeah, I might not be able to. Anyway, I wanted to just type in here. I can't seem to get to the control to uh, minimize that left-hand that left -hand bar, but um, we'll just go with it. Um, um, all right, so my, my first sort of question to everyone is like, what words or phrases do we use to, to describe human attitudes, um, human adult attitudes and behaviors? Uh, what are we trying to support? So, uh, so as the adults in the room with young people, you know, like where, where are we headed with things? So I don't know. Turn your mics on and introduce yourself. Tell us some uh, some things that you think are important. You can also put them in the chat if you'd like. But uh... I have to just say responsible, not because I think that's the number one thing, but I think that that's definitely like a cultural cultural expectation of adults. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm getting hung up on like, well, kids are already all these things. Why do we think they're not until they're adults? But I know that's not your point. No, that's not my point. No, that's not my point at all. I'm like saying, yeah. my point is going to be, know you. Let's, yeah. let's do these things now. That is going to be what I say at the end. No, we should be doing these things now. We're not waiting till later, right? We're doing this now. 
I spoiled the end. Um, I will That's say, okay. <laughs> unfortunately, uh, financial stability. Yeah. The world yeah. Leader. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I was. I can't. Go ahead. I was gonna say I can't show my screen right now, but the something about like brave and able to handle life, <laughs> like there's something about just. And it's not resilient, but just like able to handle whatever comes. Yeah. Sort of a inner strength. Yeah. I think uh, the last two can be tied together with this idea of like hyper independence. Yeah. The false idea of hyper independence. The false idea. Do you want to say more? I've just been thinking a lot about how um, in the past when I've been overwhelmed, overworked, I've turned to like individual therapy and how much um, I, I work with a children's community, um, how much having a, a mixed age community has benefited me far more in my personal growth than that independent um, like one-on-one -on -one therapy ever did. Right. So I'm going to, I'm going to add on their individualism because, because, um, I don't know, one of the things I would put on here is independence, but I'll, I'll let you guys continue on. But I get, get what you mean. Other thoughts? I would also say a sense of interdependence and like yeah. how, how we affect one another and empathy. Yeah. Relationships. Yeah empathy. Can I ask a clarifying question? Sure. Yeah. Are we identifying um, like words and phrases in like the dominant narrative of adults or are we identifying words and phrases in the type of adult communities that we are trying to foster? I, I think you could you could answer it either way, right? Because um, what you know are kids you know people who move into adulthood have to live in the world that's there that that exists but we also you know i'm hopeful that we're making steps to have a different kind of world and so by just you know i don't know supporting the kinds of things that are the current the current way of being that's not going to help necessarily change it so i don't know that's kind of wishy-washy but i wasn't sure if this was a list that we were going to then later try to dismantle or no. if it's a list of okay sorry no, i would have changed my phrasing for my answer then yeah no worries um not particularly changing it but um we're not particularly going to you know delve into this but it's just a way to sort of you know, ground us before we start into all, all the sort of things that you do, right? To ground us in what are the important things. Um, Can I say romantically active? Yeah. Emotionally yes. competent? Yes. Yes. Um, Self-motivated? Say that again. Self-motivated. Yeah, self-motivated. Can I add something? Yeah. Um, I would like to see in my young people as they go into adulthood, um, a, a like an unsee like unrelenting sense of confidence. Like I don't want them to give up when things get hard. Yeah. Also cognitive flexibility. Yeah. Oh, it's gotten down where I can't read it down there. Oops, sorry. Can you just de define that just so I can follow? Like cognitive flexibility, what does that mean? Like being able to adjust in this in in the in situations you find yourself in mentally and the way you're perceiving reality. Like there's a sense of flexibility in your response. And I guess also that ties into being responsive rather than reactive. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, to be right. yeah, so regulated or, or the ability to regulate maybe would be also one. Yeah, I think that's a great one. Yeah. I want to see my um, young people when they transition to continue to hold on to their sense of curiosity, to be curious and to be playful. Yeah. Ability to manage conflict, engage in conflict. Um, yeah. Um, I, I like the emotionally competent, but I also want to put like emotionally intelligent, like they recognize um, when they are re-stimulated or triggered or like when others are so that they don't take things personally and they can navigate the emotional yeah. landscape yeah. with an awareness of like how, how those feelings come up and what they're related to, yeah. you know, whether it's trauma or um, the present situation. So emotional intelligence. Yeah. I would also like to add self-loving, like just loving oneself. Yeah, these are so great. So many things I didn't, I didn't think about. So great. There's a yeah. couple more in the chat. Do you want me to read them? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the chat's not coming up for me because I'm over on the screen. So. Got it, yeah. Um, ability to create and seek community as needed. And how do how could I word this idea um, of like the ability to leave? <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> the like the, when to leave with yeah. boundary <laughs> holding. So I was thinking about boundary and like giving limits. Yes, that I'm I'm not sure adults can do it, but that's that's all of these are kind of like a lifelong pursuit. Yeah, okay. like I don't think adults can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, someone put in the chat ability to ask for help slash support. Yeah. Support. Boy, managing Zoom is no easy feat here. What cares where? Also creative, like creative, like being able to yeah. tap into one's creativity, but also to inspire other people with your own and uh like inspiring creativity yeah well I think self um, self empathy yeah. comes up for me self empathy and wise choices like something around you know wisdom that's of the body not just head of the body not just head yeah And, and then that makes me think of nurturing like of self and others too and community well any others people um people want to suggest yeah great list really great list and there's just so many things here Right. And so I, I think I sort of I, I sort of already talked about but for people who didn't come in till when we were sort of talking about this is this idea that these are the things we want to be doing now. Right. Like we don't want to necessarily like these aren't the things that will come along later. So we want to be looking at how to create the environment where these things can happen can happen now. And you can see there's a lot of a, a lot of cool themes here. So there's community, there's relationship. No one said specifically autonomy or um, like self governance, but you could see how lots of these fit in to uh, to those ideas, right? So being able to take care of themselves. Um, so really, really awesome list. Um, so what I'd like to do maybe now is think about the activities that that we do as adults um and like 
like let, let's see what, what the possibilities are. So what activities are part of adulthood? And we'll do sort of the same process. So if you just want to um, turn on your mic and say some, we'll just see, see what comes along. Having a job. <laughs> having like a working job. all the time, not having time. <laughs> working. <laughs> not having time. <laughs> Is having, having a job and making money the same thing? I feel like there might be set. They're kind of. Yeah. You know, I think they're making money. That's to be paying different. bills. Paying bills. Yep. Being organized. Yeah. Oof. Caring for family members. Caring for self. Yep. Setting goals. Remembering to play and enjoy life. <laughs> and also um, uh, taking, uh, like, working out exercise. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, working out. What other, what other aspects? There's other things we do. Making friends. Yeah. Think about cooking, activities also. Cooking Other dinner. These well. Cooking dinner. Yes. Chores, cleaning, laundry, all mm -hmm. that crap. Like navigating complex relationships. Yeah, I was thinking about that, like something like working on relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And then I wanted to put another, like something around that, like not just complex relationships, but like navigating crisis, <laughs> yeah. crisis relationships, crisis situations. Like that's a big, that's a part of being wow. in it. I'll make it plural, I guess. Also, yeah. that makes me think of negotiating, like having negotiations, like having, being able to negotiate and navigate complex systems in general. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and and uh, being an active citizen, you know, whether that's like being involved in the in the municipality you live in or just like in your community, <clears throat> yeah. caring about more than just yourself, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, could I put on the end of that like volunteering, like so? Because I think that's what you're saying, like. Well, yeah, but I feel like it's like engaging in the public conversation. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll leave it there. Which sometimes looks like volunteering. Yeah. I'll, I'll put that Doing up. grocery shopping? <laughs> I'm going to put that up here. Okay. Under the our chore thing. Which and like really finding good. deals. Finding <laughs> deals. You know, learning how to maximize yeah. your money, I guess. Money management. Yeah, I'm gonna put that maximizing money. Planning, planning vacations. Oh. All right, yeah, <laughs> planning vacations. I'm gonna say travel, right? What about um, like red tape stuff? Like <laughs> registering to vote and registering your business and bureaucracy and energy yeah bureaucracy this list is making me really tired i just have to say <laughs> and i'm already tired i have a baby uh how about how about hobbies right like do we all have things that we enjoy because there is there is over here play and enjoy life but we have spent a lot of time on the hard things i have to say like but like people have hobbies they have things they just do for themselves yes just put hobbies. Hobbies. yeah yeah something right. I actually um thought about in my own experience as an adult is I'm at the point where mostly everything I pick up to do I'm good at it yeah. <laughs> it yeah. wasn't always an experience as a child trying new things yeah right like yeah to studying something or yeah cool and what about um, like cre creating adventures i don't know 
you know, yeah. making space for adventure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, being a mentor to others. And leading, being a leader. Right. Yeah. Getting involved with stuff. Yeah. Any others? Um, Thinking yeah. about the future. I feel like yeah. being a, an adult, you think about the future. Uh, think working for the, this future to happen also. Yeah. yeah. Say, say that again. Working, like thinking about the future and working for the future to like happen the way, like, I don't know, like working work, on your- And work for it, yeah. Yeah. Work, work to make make it happen. Do any others ha come up in the chat? <clears throat> Maybe or doing household repairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, household repairs, maintaining your house. Being in debt. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> taking care of debt <laughs> what about like spirit it. what about spiritual like life relationships you know whatever that means to people being involved in, a, in spiritual communities or with your own spiritual path yeah driving teens everywhere say that again driving teens mm. uh. <laughs> driving Wait driving so you drive so are they driving or are you driving we're driving them until they can drive yeah so drive their friends and places and right right so <laughs> the adults need to drive and um, find a way to get around driving and getting around yeah yeah as a big one yeah yeah act how about like act uh finding a way to find out what you don't know i guess learning like continuing yeah. to learn yeah and um maybe something about like having an identity showing up in the world as yourself yeah yeah these are these are so awesome um All right. Um, so, uh, you, you know, like, we're, it's, it's so interesting. You know what hasn't been mentioned? College. Training programs, like certifications and like things that, uh, you know, that a lot of adults engage in. I, we, we mentioned it here, learning and um, trying new things and getting new hobbies and things. But not in the same way like so that's I just find that really interesting I wasn't sure when this was requested so some some folks were in touch with the ASB folks that said they'd like a session on this and I was like hmm and it was written in this way you know helping young people tran you know transition themselves to adulthood um you know I wondered well do they really just want to you know do people really just want to learn about like that transition to college Right, but clearly that's not what we're interested in, because because look look at the like large collection of things, and I, we we get it that that's not that that's not necessarily the be all end all of anything, and um, that's that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, so I, um, can I ask? Yeah. Can I say one thing about that? I also wonder if that's because of now people understanding that you're not really fully like your brain doesn't stop developing until you're 25. So I feel like kids going to college is still part of childhood <laughs> maybe maybe but there's a lot of adults who spend time in in uh in college so you know I uh so well after they're 25 and I would suggest that you know that more of us learn things in ways that aren't really college right I've learned some like like all the stuff I'm doing here with you today everything all this talk all these topics all of this I I learned recently, right? You know, PowerPoints and Zoom and all of that, right? So we learned we learned so much um, all the way through. So uh, college isn't really the only thing. So I don't know, like what what should you know? What do people want to spend time on? Um, I've got some various resources, some ways we could think about things. Um, 
how do you want to how do you want to spend the time oh there's something that we forgot to say but having babies is oh yes having babies yeah yeah it's such i'm it's so late like that's such a, a later thing culturally than when i was when i had a baby at 25 even then i felt like a really young parent at the at the playground you know at least in oregon yeah. it felt like i was like a teen mom <laughs> even though i was right. yeah 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 that's crazy it does happen quite late mm -hmm. Well, I um I can show you. So I thought a bit about work and career. We could spend some time there, you know. So those are areas I thought about, and like, and so the turn here, the turn here from this, like, what are these activities that are part of adulthood to, like, focusing on them? This, this idea is, what can we do now? And I, I I tended to focus on, you know, during high school years, but. Um, certainly lots of these things could be younger than that for sure, right? So don't take that to mean, oh yeah, no, like you have to be at least, you know, 13 or 15 or something to, uh, to do these things. That's not at all the case, but um, I just, I just, ha I happen to have that focus. And so it just comes through. Um, we could spend a little time on work on career and like, you know, like, and maybe share stories of things people have done and like ideas for things. Um, I spent some time on like uh, college and training programs, you know, so sort of um, where, how could we um, be supporting young adults to uh, get involved in sort of further learning? Should they want that? Should they need any more? Like maybe they don't, maybe they don't want any more, maybe they don't, um, aren't interested in anything further, but I spent some time there. So there's some stuff about college, fair bit travel I spent some time thinking about travel and this is like it just starts with like you know um just like young people and driving uh young people in public transportation um making accommodations making plans and arrangements and and things like that you know how can we support some things there um some travel things that kids could get involved with now um and then I left some space for us to just think about the adulting like 101 experiences, what things, and these aren't things where, you know, you want to necessarily like, oh, okay, today we're going to learn about, uh, um, yeah, insurance or something, um, taxes, you know, it's going to be more like how have people involved uh, young people with some of these more adult things that occur. So, um, so I don't know, any thoughts on space that people would want to spend time in? No one's really saying. Um, I kind of, I, I kind of want to dig out kind of like the financial and the work part of it. For, yeah. I'm struggling with a little bit of, you know, just to be honest, I'm struggling with a little bit of like just the ableist language that we have around like getting to work and getting to adult success. Um, just in inside of my family right now, we're. Um, like my um sister-in-law is trying to support a um a mentally ill 18 year old to like integrate and become an adult and there like seems to be like zero way that can happen <laughs> so and 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 so so i feel like when we come to this it's like oh we run straight up against that individualism and then a lot of like you know trying to prepare our kid for this world that's really not made to like help them succeed. Um, and if you don't, if you're not like, you know, setting someone up to be successful is like so complicated and and sometimes out of your control, like not something that you can make happen the way that you want it, you know, despite your best intentions. So I just I just needed to say that. Yeah, yeah. Well, ha happy to spend some time here. That that's a hard situation. 
I've, you know, I've seen various kids who you, you could see how like they, as they get 17, 18, 19, 20, you know, they're, they're still, they, they, they haven't changed their um, approach to what they do in life. They're still very, very dependent and in, in their ways. And so I don't know the, um, the behaviors of your uh, family member who, you know, who cl clearly has some, you're saying has some struggles. Um, but I, I do think there's, there's ways forward. And you can see as they, you know, sometimes kids begin to get their feet under them a little bit, they can step into something that feels right for them that might not be what other people are doing at all. Right. So is that is that really what you're saying, Brooklyn, is is um, thinking about how the, the breadth of this, what this could could look like? Mm -hmm. And yeah. I guess I'm also saying that that some you know, like my mother became disabled at 27 and she never worked like a conventional job and wasn't productive in all a whole bunch of these ways. Like she's just a total failure in all of these adult ways, right? And you know, she's 66 years now old now and she's just found like some peace. And I don't know, I just feel like that there's a lot of value in human life, even if you can't do any of these things. And yeah. Parent, yeah. Prepared for that also being a reality that you like have to might have to accept, even if it maybe hopefully maybe just a short period of time. But then also, people in their extended yeah. networks and stuff. I just I want to like just make a little bit of space for acceptance of like yeah that reality and yeah love and compassion for those people and families for sure for sure. And I I don't yeah I don't see that as not non productive like not productive right like so. Yeah, it wouldn't look like this necessarily, but perhaps there's things that, you know, people are doing to make those things work for other people or like, you know, contributing in smaller ways that we don't think about. So. I'm yeah. wondering if we're going to, I'm wondering if I want to respond to Brooklyn, but I'm also wondering if we're going to have a good discussion. Would you mind turning off the slide share so we can see each other better? Yeah. Because I, yeah. I, everyone is so tiny and I really want to see you yeah and I was thinking Brooklyn if you don't mind what I want what came up for me when you said what you said was like just the idea of just success and like defining what that is I am a filmmaker I work with people to like basically I make legacy films so I help like old, old people all over the age spectrum but I have I ask people questions about like well, what is success and what is your purpose like and refer like looking at your life story and looking at the choices you've made like how would you look at your whole life and I feel like I wish that that was part of like the growing up process that we would just have this built-in self-reflection piece that we just don't have that I think would then help people to like know what they were put here for because I I looking at I love like the structures of how you thought of even this this whole session Allison is so interesting because it's so how I how I think I was like trained to think yeah. of you know this is like a transition of there's this way to do things not that you're doing that but like this is how my brain works too sure. and I think about my daughter being um she's being raised in a different country a totally different paradigm a different culture than I was raised in and I'm just constantly struggling with like how to support like where we live kids are not allowed to work like they're not allowed to work in any way and the suggestion that she would work is like sacrilegious because I started working when I was like nine so yes. the fact that I can't let my child even babysit, like I said this to a mom and she was like, it was like, I was saying I was going to abuse my child. So <laughs> it's really like, and I think the world has changed so much, even in this short, I mean, I was, I was 30 when I had my daughter. So like in the 30 years that I took to become a mother, it's like, she has a totally different reality than I had. Yeah. So yeah. all the things that I think about that I was raised to do, are not the things that I'm preparing her for. So I feel like my interest in this session is like, it's, it, it's not exactly what Brooklyn was saying, but it's aligned with it of just like the world, we're so much also more sensitive to difference, to yeah. um, to, individu to individuality, but also to like the common good in a different way that I'm like, I just feel so unprepared on some deep level to even yeah. grapple. So I wanted to just have a, I wanted to see where, 
the people we're at with this. Yeah, that's, yeah, no, I, I, this is great. Um, and, you know, perhaps our, our definition of work should be really broad because I, you know, I don't see just like paid work as the only kind of work there is, right? Like there's all kinds of things that could be considered as work, right? Like, so your daughter's probably busy, you know, doing things that, that they might consider work. I don't know how old they are, but you know, they might be considering like, like they think, well, this is my work for today, right? Like that's just the way they think about it. I don't know. Um, Hoops and um, Granier family, you have your hand up. Yes. Um, oh, hi. My name is David. Hi. I'm hi, David. Just, uh, Michaela's husband. I just wanted to share really quick because I actually had the experience. I was homeschooled in high school. And just going back to the uh, question of like, I, I think, you know, I did, a, I had a curriculum where I had to do like all of the typical high school work. But really, even in my adult life, the things that actually became most relevant, even to my career, were just the things that I invested myself in. So like computer coding, um, and even like playing guitar, like I would just spend probably, you know, five or six hours a day just playing music. And even though I don't, I'm not a professional musician now, that's like a, a really central part of like what anchors me as a person to, you know, be a happy individual. So that was something I spent a lot of time doing in high school that I think we don't, if you can be doing it, if you're doing it in the context of like, you're in a school band or, you know, you have like a, a specific goal that you're working towards, you can't, our culture tells us you can't just be doing it just because it's a fun thing to do or something to invest yourself in. But those are the things that actually become people's passions when they get older, when they become adults and often what end up making, if they can do it for a living, it makes them very happy, much happier than, you know, whatever, a desk job or whatever. So that's all I wanted to say. And he's not yeah, just so like a husband. He's a wonderful human being on his own. <laughs> and so David, I just want to, want to suggest too, what if it were reversed? What if you were a musician and that's how you earned your money and you did coding on the side? And um, so I, I'm not sure you do coding. For no, I mean, well, it, it is. You I, said I, you spent a lot of time. Go ahead. Exactly. No, I don't, I don't do it necessarily for a living, but it is, I studied English in college. So the only reason I have a job is really because of my hobby. It's not because of my degree ultimately. <laughs> yeah, right. And it's just, and it's so interesting and you don't know where it's going to come out. And um, it's nice. Sabria. Yeah, I'm trying to gather my thoughts. I get I get stuck in this place. I was thinking about your question, Jamie, in the chat and then just this whole session. I get stuck in this place where I'm like, yes, we absolutely need clear ideas about how we can help with internships and finances and all those sort of like schooly, adulty life things. And it's very helpful to have a roadmap. And I think one thing I respect about like liberated learners is that you have all these connections in the community that you can like help your teens get connected with an internship or like practice in their own work. And that's one thing that I had as a young person that I just did myself. And I see it like lacking in a lot of yeah. SD centers and unschooling situations now. And I'm wondering where it is. So I really think those intentional um. I don't know, ideas about what that can look like and community connections are super important. And I, it's almost like this, how people talk about art or anything, like you kind of have to learn the rules and then you kind of break them and you just do your own thing anyway. <laughs> so like, I think we need these guidelines. And I think sometimes we get so stuck in like, is there a roadmap for the perfect way to support my young person and transitioning to adulthood? absolutely not yeah. <laughs> and it has to be like innate in you and you have to be like talking about it all the time like my okay. five-year-old was talking about complex issues and how we spend our money and then he was at seven and then he was at 12 just because it's part of our yeah. family life so it's interwoven in like everything we do I guess and it's not just oh they reach 14 time to worry and figure this out now it's just like interwoven in what we do and I know that's true for you too Allison I just want oh. to say it's yeah. like also has to be just essentially a part of how we talk with young people and how we think of them yeah yeah, yeah, completely agree. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this idea that, you know, like there's, there's, there's important work that you could do, right? Like as young as possible, right? Like, like there's important things that you, you can do and like that you could be better at the things, even just in our household, 
right? Like you could be the one who like is in charge of these things, right? So make sure this stuff is working, whatever, whatever, you know, kinds of kinds of experience. I think that's super important. Um, and, it, and it sort of lays the foundation, I, I think, for, you know, kids thinking about themselves in that, um, who said it was, uh, you know, uh, relentlessly competent, I think maybe was the was the phrase that was used. And um, so that's exactly right. It's like, I know how to take care of the spider that's, um, you know, gotten stuck in the wherever that nobody wants there, right? I know how to like, you know, manage the puppy, you know, I know how to like, you know, I don't know, um, get the new TV set up, whatever, like, you know, and like doing those things so important. And then I think the step whether you talked about is stepping out to doing those things with other people outside of outside of your place. Right. And that's that's the connections to other people. And we've I have we've worked hard, I think, at the centers that I've worked at to help kids, you know, connect with other people and to begin that, you know, small place. A kid who um, said they wanted to be want to be a filmmaker and uh, wasn't um, wasn't really working on films all that much. Did a little bit of YouTube videos, you know, sort of streaming sort of things, but wasn't really working on it. And it kept talking about it. Was starting into like taking community college classes about it. Um, but how could we help them really explore what it's like? We were lucky to find somebody who. Uh, who works in film and took them on right away. And I can, I was a little worried because the kid, you know, struggled to, to like do things that, you know, did, what, did, didn't always um, realize what needed to be done, needed to be told exactly what to do sometimes. And um, so they were gonna go on these like shoots and like the person's gonna be relying on this kid to like get all the stuff out of the truck and to get it set up and to hook these wires up and all this stuff. And it has worked fabulously, right? The kid really has gotten some direct experience in the things that the person loves having the help. And um, it's, it's, been, it's been really fabulous. So you just, and you, so you can't even know, like I shouldn't like, I tried to keep myself from second guessing. Oh, that's never going to work out. It's like, no, no, no. Just let it play out. Help the adult um, understand how they can be um, forgiving in these situations. So we had one kid start at a automotive, like a high end, like a racing car automotive place. And he got fired the first day. He, you know, it was paid work, but it was somebody we knew and we put him in contact with them. He got fired the first day because the guy said, you know, like, like clean the paint off the shelf or do something with the paint on these shelves. I'm not exactly sure. And the kid didn't do it and didn't ask any questions, which is like common actually among, you know, young people and then gets fired. It's like, well, don't come back tomorrow because, you know, like I asked you to do this thing and you didn't do it. And, um, and then we talked to that, um, that person further and said, well, you know, we'd really like you to be part of like our internship program. And so like when a kid doesn't do what you, what you're suggesting like talk to them about it right we didn't say don't just fire them but talk to them about it like give them a second chance you know see and he was able to the, the guy was able to turn around fabulously and you know kids a few more kids were able to have that experience I don't know that the, he's still doing it but um, so talking to the business people and helping them see how they could you know be mentors to these kids in a way if you want to use that word but you know be be supportive of the kids and them, you know, making mistakes in that situation. So other questions, Bria, more. Sorry, I just had a clarifying thought. You have a lot of high school age kids who have been to school for years, right? Yeah, yeah. They might be, they're probably acting a lot different than people who have been unschooled their whole lives. Yeah. Those people might have those skills already by that age. The, the, the homeschoolers yeah 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 the homeschoolers that's absolutely true so the kids so who you come have out of a lot of like real in-depth work with kids who've been schooled for years yeah so so kids who have not been been in school they tend to come in and have a lot more um competence in lots of places and um and can ask questions surprisingly you know kids who are in school don't ask questions necessarily <laughs> kids who are homeschooled you know, that's not completely true. I can think of a girl who asked a million questions, but, um, but you can see that you can really see the difference. Kids who come out of school versus kids who have been homeschooled for a long time. I don't know. Other, uh, I don't, 
Sorry, I don't know how to do the little hand. Um, um, yeah, down under. Uh... Got it. Can I ask a question? Yes, go ahead. <laughs> You're here. Go um, ahead. Uh, I wonder about this moment of like, where is the moment where we push them to go and be proactive? And where is the moment? Because sometimes teenagers have a very low energy and like have like, are like building this thing and it's taking like, it's, they're like into, I, in, into this like very slow um, discovery internal, it's all things happening at the same time in their brains. And so, when is the time to let this time exist for them to figure out what they are and what they want? And when I, I have a squad of 13 teenagers and when it's the time to push them to go and like be proactive in the world and what, like I, I struggle with that yeah. with, well, that's that's the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I tend to um, err on the side of not pushing, and I tend to ask them if they want me to keep bringing something up. So a girl who's got a job that she hates uh, and says she's um, going to find another job, you know, it was on, I beat with her once a week. So I, I work in a situation where I have some kids who, um, we call it mentoring, but you know, I meet with them once once a week, and it's really a conversation about like where they are, whatever they want to talk about, um, how things are going, keeping track of what they're doing, you know. Um, <clears throat> so she has a job she hates, and she wants to find another job. And like I, I was bringing up, well, she told me what she was going to do, so I bring up, you know, well, like, how, how'd you make out this week? You know, get that. She's like, no, I didn't do it this week, and that goes on for a little while, and you know maybe two or three weeks in, it's like, do you want me to bring it up or not? Like, you know, it's okay, right? Either way, like it's what, what, what's helpful to you. And, um, and she's like, yeah, no, I got it. And then the last time I met with her, she's like, oh yeah, I, I got going on that. You know, like I, I went to Lambertville and uh, I looked around at, at um, possible, possible businesses to get a job at and mostly they were closed and that was really unfortunate. And blah, blah. We chatted about what happened and, and such. And then another girl wants me to ask her all the time like, so yeah, let's keep talking about this. Let's keep talking about it. And it's just like, she's making no progress on, on, she wants to be an actor. She wants to experience, I don't know that she would say she wants to be an actor, but she wants experience, you know, being in a play or in a musical or something. Um, and she enjoys that. And she's just making no progress in like making that happen for herself. We have a couple little things that she's doing at our center um, and some connections that I pointed out to her. And I, I just heard that uh, she's um, she's she's working on uh, practicing singing for an audition, and uh, I'd I'd sort of given up. I was just like, ah, not not going to happen, right? And and now it's happening, and it's happening on her timetable, right? Which is right for her. So I I feel like I, I feel like you know asking them and talking about it. If they want to keep talking about it, fine. I'm happy to keep talking about it. If they don't fine and you know like and and they'll get it going when the time comes i think the other thing that happens for us is they see other people so interestingly we have another girl in our center who just got two leading roles who just was in in a production and she just and she's older than this girl that i was talking about and um and she's just gotten two leading roles in two more productions and i think that was inspiring for this girl I don't know. She hasn't told me, but I would guess, right? So the so when you have these mixed age um, groups, they um, they they see what's happening for other people, and they can sort of get up more gumption to do the thing for themselves. I think. Um, I think that happens. I don't know. Other people have things they would um, chime in on. Pushing. Well, but isn't it? I mean, isn't it like the age? Part of the development of this yeah. this individuating time period that is complicated, especially I feel like for the parents. <laughs> My daughter's twelve and a half, 
um, and is clearly just on her own journey. And I'm so trying to be supportive, but I was reading something and you can totally disagree with this and maybe you'll tell me a totally different thing, which will help me because I listened to this book and it was, I feel like very mainstream in certain ways. And there was some things I was like, I just don't agree with, but it was talking about basically this teen period, almost anything, especially for girls, anything you offer to them, especially from the parent role is going to be rejected. Like, even if they're thirsty and you're like, Hey, do you want some water? Even if they're like dying of thirst, they're going to be like, oh, now I have to say no. Like I wanted the water. I was all I've been thinking about is water for three hours. And now my mom offered me water. Like, fuck, I can't drink water. So I struggle all the time. Cause I feel like part of how I've, ident- like how I've supported her is noticing a need and being like, here, like, yeah. here's this great opportunity or here's this person who can help you or here. And like learning to just shut that impulse down is really hard for me and just yeah. be like, whew, that is going to make me cry. Yeah. Well, um, I think that's true for, you know, certainly my older son said exactly that. I suggested something to him. He's in his thirties now. I suggested something to him and he goes, oh, great. Now you've said it. I can't do it. <laughs> it was exactly that. But I think different kids are different and differently relationships are different. And I think you have to sort of navigate the one, the one that you have. Right. And there, there may be ways to talk about things that aren't like, so like when I meet with kids, you know, we have a list of things that we talked about in the past that we might want to continue talking about. Right. So there's a list because it's more formal. Right. But as a parent, I wouldn't have a list. Right. But, you know, it's like as something came up, you could talk about it, not with respect to the young person, but with respect to what's happening in the world. Right. You can still talk about these great things. Right. So for somebody who wants to be in their own show, it's like, well, there's this new show coming out, you know, in town, you know, like, I'd like to go see that, you know, like, do you want to go? It's not even do you want to go first? Right. It's I want to go. Right. It's not do you want this to be you do want to go because I know you really like acting and you really like shows and stuff. It's like, I want to go. Do you want to go? Right. And then just finding ways to connect with those things, I think, without, um, yeah, because I, I completely agree that. Well, be- because, I mean, I'm struggling with the, and she's also just decided to return to school. So that's like a whole other thing, which I am supporting. And also, you know, we went on this vacation and it was like, I know, like the, the, the kind of what you're talking about with is they're like pushing, but in a different way, like just when you know they enjoy something, but then they're resisting doing the thing and like not wanting to push too much, but also wanting to help them do what's like, sometimes she'll just be having an emotional freak out and I'll just be like, and I feel like I'm like setting her up to have like, this is what she's gonna talk about in therapy in the future, right? Like, I'm like, go write in your journal. Like, I know it helps you. Like, you will feel so much better. Go upstairs and write in your journal. And she'll be like, ah, blah, blah, blah. and then she'll go write in her journal and she'll be like, thank you. That really helped. So like, yeah. I guess it's knowing your own kid and knowing when to push yeah. and it's different with when you're yeah. the sort of, supervisor teacher mentor person but yeah I mean this transition period is so complex (laughs) can you talk can you talk to your daughter like after those situations and say you know like what if it happens again do you are you okay with me doing this right like the consent piece so I don't because I think she like I feel like I'm becoming this control yeah controlling person that I don't want to be because I just don't know what my role is right now that's, yeah. I guess, this period is like finding, I guess, for the adults in these kids' lives, like how do we support their transition and let them yeah. be themselves without um, yeah. hijacking their own learning process? Because also they have to learn not to do the things that help them so that they can figure it out themselves. Like, I don't want to take away right. her figuring it out for herself right. stuff. Because if she always needs you there to say, go write in your journal, that's not helpful, right? Like someday she has to figure it out for herself that what what's what suits her what helps her you know get to the next point yeah yeah good uh brooklyn something that helps me ground myself in um helping out my 16 year old or both of my kids in towards adulthood is um or just in general but i think it will it continues to help as we like as i look towards the future is thinking about whose responsibility is it and, and then continuing to put that back on to the person who's responsible for it, who's going to have the consequences of their of those choices, which is the youth. 
that's scary to like be like oh this kid is you know but just this constant practice of being responsible for yourself or responsible for your choices and what's great about before they're adult is that I'm here to support you after you fail and when you if you know and that's that's the beauty of this place is that you can go out and like be responsible for yourself and that and take the consequences of that and it's going to be like falling in a pile of puddle of pillows compared to like when we grew, when we're an adult and um when they're an adult and I can't and and I will be there but you know that's kind of the thing is getting to the point where right you know, you're for, more responsible in a right. like visceral bureaucratic way for yourself right and and also that those like consequences are going to be like harder and like more diff difficult um and the other that was just that was kind of the second thought but the first thought that I wanted just back with what Bria said about connecting with community I think it's important to know what you are and are not good at so like when I'm mm -hmm. helping my teen um mm -hmm. very honest with them that like I won't be the person or the access to information for like financial stuff I will be able to help them find somebody who can like help them create a better plan they're very curious about it I'm not that person so I've got to go find somebody else or find resources and making sure that that um that I'm just I know what I can and can't support them around especially when it comes to like specific adult skills yeah 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 no really good points Brooklyn um so in the second one it makes me think of like when you say it's useful for kids to understand what they're not good at um yeah, and so sometimes kids will, you know, they don't know what sort of like outside work that they might enjoy. They don't know, and they're like, "Oh, well, I'll get a, I'll get my first job at, at a restaurant," you know, and they last one day, right? And that's so good, right? Like they don't have to know ahead of time what work it is that would suit them, right? Like it's it's so good to have that experience and say. Or is it just that kind, that restaurant that you had a poor experience in? Or is it like food prep in that sort of way? It's way too stressful. You didn't realize that it would be like this, right? And so that that's, I think, think really useful. And then, you know, and then this idea is that when, when it doesn't work out for them, you know, like they have a person there that they can have a conversation with, right? And that's, and that's the sort of like asking for help right that gets back to this idea that you know it's nice to have adults who can ask for help or can can say yeah i could really use a conversation about this thing that's going on in my life and like that can be a role that you know adults and young people's lives can serve and um and and it builds this relationship so when it's your own kids it builds this relationship for for forever Right. So later on, when they when they have things that now they, they are the one responsible and it's not going the way it needs to, you know, they'll feel they'll feel OK about like having a conversation about it, you know, to help them sort of think through because it, it always works. It, it's so helpful to talk through like when you've got a really sort of big, you know, complicated, nasty situation. It's, it's often really helpful to just talk through that situation here, you know, hear yourself say things, even if it's not the other person who's advising you, it's just uh, useful to have a, a person to talk with. And that, that could be really nice when it, when, um, when it's your parent. So, cool. Thank you, Brooklyn. Um, Sabrina. Yeah, I was just gonna um, share uh, that I've, we're unable to do like the mentoring stuff in our community just because of the number of people that we have uh, that are younger and just are staffing. Um, but I've taken the idea of the library learners mentoring piece and um, I have with my kids, I'll go one on one with them. I'll take a journal. I'll uh, offer some writing, some um, question prompts and otherwise just kind of unpack and then just keep uh, every two weeks. Um, going and doing that for an hour and and the and the frame of it uh helps me to kind of separate that it's not uh me as a parent we go out somewhere we'll go to a restaurant or something that they pick uh, I knew that they pick and um so it's just been it's been helpful I just wanted to share that as Ariel was sharing her story um a little bit and um 
uh, yeah, sometimes we're like unpacking the learning community, things that go on, maybe things that bothered them, but they didn't speak up to. Um, so it's just, um, yeah, that's, that's really it I wanted to share. Thank yeah. you. That's nice, Sabrina. I, I've, I've often talked with parents about this idea of like um, connecting with your kids just around having a relationship. And so like going someplace and doing something together, especially if it requires sort of sitting down together, like going, having, you know, having a meal together somewhere, you know, it, it can be just afternoon tea or like this, this various things that, that you can do to just sort of enjoy each other in like that conversation space can be super helpful. Um, yeah, so uh, there's a question here. I'm curious for kids who are not at a specific learning center uh, and or ones who have returned to traditional schooling, are there any mentors available in the community? Um, I do think so. Yes, I, I do think so. Um, certainly, um, it, it might it might just look different, right? So it depends maybe on what you mean. So Ariel, what you mean by mentor? I mean, I'm just wondering, listening to you all, I'm like, ah, oh, I wonder if there's somebody from the SD community that sort of works one on one with kids who are, you know, wanting to uh, learn about adulting that isn't, that are, but may not be wanting it from their parents, right? If, yeah. Lainey Liberty does a online teen like coming into yourself group and everybody, all the teens who do that group um, seem to love it. it. My co-facilitator Miro Siegel is um, her son and they're like lifelong unschoolers and world schoolers. So I can get you that yeah. link. Yeah, I think Blake Bowles has run some like that as well. Um, I don't know if he does it in an ongoing way though. Anybody else have people they know that offer that sort of? Mm. I also wonder, Ariel, just your community that that knows you, knows her friends that you trust. Um, we kind of have a village, and I've approached my now thirteen-year-old about, you know, who would she feel comfortable sitting with and doing the thing that I'm doing with her, but once a month, maybe. A, 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 you know, a, whether it's a extended family or it's um, friend group. Um, yeah. So just like other options may be available in your own village. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I mean, it's all, and I don't want to hijack the whole thing, but it's complicated by the fact that we just moved to this country a year ago. So we're in a big transition and I think ultimately we'll all yeah. find our way, but it's, um, it's the age of it adds to the drama of the whole thing. Yeah, and I don't think it's how we, we think about, like I think about the community I live in, there's really no opportunity for young people to spend time with, you know, um, adults in, in, that, in that framework, right? So they could have a job, you know, and work with somebody at a job, they could have a coach, they could have a, um, a choir director, you know, like they could have these adults in their lives, but you know, it's it's not the same framework, and um, and and I wonder if there's people who have like like you say, Sabrina have um, have just found it. You know, I, I can think of um, um, a young person I work with who spends a lot of time. She, this person, she just turned fourteen, and um, she spends a lot of time at a, a shop in her town. I don't I don't even know what the shop sells, but I I'm not even sure. But apparently, just spends time with the person there and like, like helps them out a little bit, but just like sort of chit chats about her life, you know? And I would say that that's a really like awesome, positive, like um, person in her life that can just sort of give her like thoughts. They can have the discussion about what's going on. Or I don't know what they talk about, but uh, so it's a girl that I mentor, uh, but um, you know, she has, she has other adults in her life that, uh, that, that offer her, you know, feedback in some way or opportunity for discussion. Other thoughts? I have um, a son who's 12. He's about to be 13 in a month. And um, 
this is my first teenager. Um, and I think one thing that's, I, we've always been um, tolerant of my kids having outbursts, uh, me and my partner, David. Um, so we're used to meltdowns and, and we're like, you know, we just take it in stride because we know that that's part of like the healing process. Once they go through the emotional part, then they can get back to their thinking and um, I'm seeing with my 12 year old that he has a lot of emotional outbursts and I, I know there's like a hormonally charged period of time and um, I remember my own teenagehood it's like hard to uh, hard to know that about your like I didn't know that about myself at the time but I know that about my son and um yeah I don't know what else I wanted to say about that I just wanted to share like wow it's gonna be yeah. quite a thing awesome. these yeah. next several years yeah. or or not right it's hard to know right like hard to know yeah. like he might be getting it all out done all out now and right you know, you know that yeah. would be so cool yeah and do you talk do you when he talk about them absolutely yeah 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 and so like and and able to process them and might have might be coming into a space where it has more experiences with other people and might find that they don't want to have sort of the the same sort of outburst they might have had in the comfort of your family like and you know that that'll be interesting too right so, yeah yeah I was I was at the library, you know, like working in the stacks or whatever, you know, whatever opportunity or experience that they have. And like, I felt like this and this was going to happen. And I just, I didn't do it. Right. I just, I did this instead or something. Mm. I would like to see that. Cause I think we have, um, we have a little community here. Not everybody practices self-directed education, but I am, you know, we still, practice like gentle parenting and um but my my kids had a, a huge outburst in front of everybody and um we were able to talk about that and like you know we call it like clienting without permission you know like you're you're having your feelings and you're making everybody have to listen to them and that doesn't necessarily they didn't necessarily give you permission to do that where we as your parents we do give you permission almost all the time yeah. um because you know we want you to have that ab ability to like go through the feelings and then come back on the other side and yeah so um we've <laughs> I know it's not like gonna change I'm, overnight I'm really impressed that your family is able to just like allow that with that and regulate through it yourself I'm just like I just want to give you like huge props and like thank you. I mean, so it makes proud for of you for doing that. I get it. And and the fact that he's a boy, like that he's not afraid to cry <laughs> right now. He's about to be a teenager, and like none of my kids are afraid to to have tears and meltdowns and their big feelings. And um, yeah, it makes for awkward social situations sometimes because parents don't always understand like this is just a process and there's nothing to be afraid of if your kid is being emotional. Yeah. Yeah. But that, then there's another side to it. Yeah. And, and the next step though, yeah. becomes like, like you said, like how to do that with other people. Right. Like, so I, I'm an easy crier and you know, like things will sort of set me in motion like to cry and I, I tell people around me all the time I'm an easy crier it's okay right so that's my process right so I don't have an outburst but you could see the emotions just well right up right and so kids will say something and I'll be like it's okay like I know I'm starting to cry and I'll just tell them instead of them seeing it and not knowing what to do about it you know I'll just be like oh I'm, I'm an easy cry it's, it's okay right like it, it just means that you know my emotions are just coming up to the surface right and so yeah you know, helping, helping them get a language around it and how to be with other people. And, um, you know, and anger is a, a much harder one. We have a boy who uh, had pretty 
it was a hard situation, was confronted publicly about something that they were, didn't, you know, they didn't want to be there in the confrontation and, um, and afterwards got so mad, right? And they did okay in the moment, right? So they didn't like, you know, do anything violent or had an outburst in the moment. And there was, you know, maybe 10 or 12 kids around, right? And so this is a 17 year old boy. And um, so, you know, but afterwards got really, really mad, really, really mad, sent all sorts of like very threatening and angry texts to various people. And, um, you know, did so much damage, did so much damage. And like how to, right, did, did so well in the moment, right? Like the, the confrontation was hard and could have probably, it, it, that's not the only way to do it is just to sit there and take it, right? There were other ways that could have happened. They could have stood up and said, you know, I don't want to do this right now. Could you get someone to, you know, like be with us so that we could talk about this? Or I don't want to talk about this at all with you and just left. Or there's other ways to have handled it. But, um, you know, just, and, and now we're working with, with him to understand, you know, the level of like, take, to, to just take responsibility for like the, the hurt that has been, you know, spewed out. And, um, and it's going to be a long, a long haul. He's 17. So it's going to take yeah. him a while. He, he's, he's much more likely to, he, what he would want to say is like, well, that's in the past. I'm moving forward. And it's like, right. you no, know, no, no, you can't burn, you know, like you can't leave a trail of burnt, you know, like grass behind you and just like move forward. Right. Like, no, we need to deal with what, what's left behind. And, um, yeah, that's, that's a big thing about growing up male too is like that's one of the only emotions you're allowed is anger and and it's it's complicated you know there's thing reasons to be angry but it's like figuring out ways to have your anger that's safe yes. and not yes. destructive yes exactly. that's something that we are all learning um yes. right now <laughs> like yes. every day yeah, yeah um, he so deserved to be angry. Uh, he was humiliated in front of everyone. He so deserved to be angry, but you can't leave a trail of destruction. Um, yeah, and, and actually, and the, your um, whole story is kind of reminding me of like some of the traditional ways that indigenous peoples would um, sort of ritualize coming into adulthood for young people. Yeah. Um, that doesn't really exist in the same way in our modern society, especially for, and, and like what the definition of masculinity is in an, in an indigenous culture, as opposed to what, what it means to be a man in the, in the, this Western country that I live in. I live in the United States, but like, we really try to try to take values from the traditional and indigenous um, ideas of manhood. Cause I mean, we're raising boys. So I don't, I don't know. I don't have any experience with girls going into um, adulthood except for myself, but uh, yeah. So we're just taking that. We're taking a lot of ideas from different sources of like what it means to be a man as a, and, and part of that is to be nurturing you know, being a man is, is being nurtured, and however they identify, of course, but right now, so far, it's as males, so. What, what we're seeing in, in that, in that arena is so hard. Um, kids are spending a lot of time with each other online in spaces that um, they, there's kids, this, this boy and those others who don't really have a sense of what um, what's okay, right? And so they come away thinking, well, this is what this is what everybody does. It's like, uh, no, right? So like this this is you know these things would be offensive to many most of the people here, right? Doing it like this, right? Not not okay. And um, and lots of people are going to say, yeah, we. We, we can't we can't be part of a community where this this these sorts of things would be shared or practiced um, 
So there's a, a lot of online discords and other, I imagine, um, groups. And I, I think there's there's a lot of boys, and I would say this is much more much more common, I'm sure, among um, um, conventional school kids, but um, who spend a, a lot of time with these groups, and uh, and and it's hard, and it's in particular boys. Yeah, and not seeing their place in the world, thinking that they're um, um, don't have a place. Unfortunately, they might just like have to destroy and burn so much before they get to a point in their lives yeah. that they recognize like what it looks like to not be, not destroy people who you, you value, but more like destroy like the concepts of toxicity and yeah. patriarchy and, yeah. and, and, you know, I mean, and some men never learn that it's really, it's really tough. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> well, it, 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 teen, it, teens can be so awesome. I don't know. They get a bad rap. I, they, they could be so awesome to spend time with. I, I don't know. My cup gets filled every day, like with the conversations and the things kids do and how they, you know, just be with me it's you know uh, it's it's pretty amazing so I guess since you work with teens and and maybe this is something I want to hear from you but like it doesn't have to look pretty it doesn't have to look like you're just getting this time in your life that you are doing exactly what you want to do and like you're really building for your future and it's it's more it's it, it's a struggle like but there's lots of there can be struggles and and yeah. through the struggles come out some of yeah. the life experiences that are going to yeah. shape you in yeah. positive ways yeah so if if things if things go well for the boy i'm just talking about there's opportunity for him to like no things are not going well for him he's made a mess of things but we're still there for him um, can't he can't be in the space with other kids physically um, uh, but and a lot of the kids have blocked him in various ways because he's just been you know left such a scorched scorched earth trail so uh, but he's meeting with my colleague um, on a uh, hopefully he's met with him once and they're working on getting another meeting and right now the boy the boy will say something like well, no, like set that up with my mom. I, I don't want to, you know, like I don't want to do it with you. And does that through his mom. So his mom gets in touch with, he's a kid 17. His mom gets in touch with uh, a colleague and says, well, you know, he wants to do it through me. And we're going to go back around and say, no, no, it needs to be directly. He needs to want this enough. He needs to want it enough to do it himself. And he has an opportunity here to do something. So no, it doesn't. It looks like kids, uh, there's, a uh, kid in the space who paces around and like constantly pacing around on what day was it Tuesday a whole group of kids went to a play and so there were fewer kids there in particular fewer kids than the ones he hangs with and he paced the whole day and if I'd asked him he would have said I'm bored I didn't I didn't ask him right like so it doesn't look good but when I meet with him a conversation is often about like you know like how do you handle when you're bored? Like, wh what do you want? Do you, do you want to be bored? Like, like, do you want it to be that way, right? When you're bored, like, is that, is, how, how do you want it to be, right? And to, to hear from him and, and just engage him with that conversation. We also talk a lot about how he feels better when he has purpose in his life, right? And so I, I can see these sparks of like, oh, it was a fabulous weekend because this and this and this. And it's like, oh, those are meaningful to you. I, I can I can feel that energy from you. And, you know, like what I notice is that you feel better when you feel connected with other people and you feel like you have relatedness and purpose, which is what Gina Riley's talking about over in that other session. But it's that internal motivation piece, right? And helping him see it in himself. So maybe he can make it happen for himself, right? So, um, and that might happen well after he's done with us. Right. 
So he, this is his last year with us. I suspect we won't make a ton of progress before the end of the year. I mean, it's not my progress to make for him, but I don't mean to say it that way. But it's just, you know, he he feels unhappy. He he says that he's unhappy in these moments. And uh, so, like, if you want to make a change for that, right? I, I forget what, where we got off on this, but um, forget what the motivating point was, but. Yeah, I guess it was like, does it does it always look like good? Kids all like worked out. And then, okay, so I'll talk about a girl who has it all figured out for herself. Like she doesn't. It looks like she does, but she doesn't, right? She just doesn't. She just sits there and she goes, I, I don't want to be this like person who sees myself as like an A plus student. I don't want to be that person, but how do I how do I stop it? Right, because she's doing all these things. She's got all these jobs, and she's taking a community college class. She's doing all these things, and she's unhappy in in her in her way of being, right? And so she's questioning whether this is really, you know, when she first sat down, like one of the early conversations we typically have is, you know, do you see yourself going to college? Because that'll play into, you know, some of the conversations we'll have. And she's like, yeah, for sure. And then it's later, later, it's like, well, have you do you have a sense of what kind of college? She goes, well, I, I want to consider the Ivies. And, you know, like I probably, she probably saw it on my face. I was like, cool, that, okay, yeah, they're pretty stressful places. And she just came, she came to us and saying, oh, it's, it's school is way too stressful. Like I couldn't deal with the stress. And I'm just like, go, okay. But, you know, she's come around on that very quickly. She's, you know, like very quickly, she sees that she doesn't want to be part of that community where that's what everybody's about. Everybody else is going to be about like the best SAT score, the best this, you know, like being that A plus student. And now she has to get herself out of this habit, right? That she's made for herself, this identity. Um, and um, and it's and so you know she's working on it. It'll it'll take her probably all the you know if that's what she continues to work on, it'll take her a long time, well beyond when she's at our center, I suspect. So it does look it does look um, like a lot of different human beings are working on various things. Or not working on them, right? Living their lives. I shouldn't even say they're not all working on things, but living their lives. And um, any other? Uh, yeah, sorry, Heidi. I came to this late. Oh, so it's... forgive forgive me if if you've covered this. Um, yeah. But I kind of have a like a a scenario. Um, so I have an eleven year old boy who literally came out of the womb with a football. Like he just came into this world like that. And I had this like Waldorf in-home preschool that he went to and like, you could, you you know, whatever you are, we love you. And he just like, he just literally, his first word was ball. And he just loves the NFL and dirt bikes and, you know, all this stuff. And as an unschooler, he's 11 now. I mean, all he talks about and he wants to look at scores and, you know, it's just, but that whole system really does breed a certain, like they are kind of like advocating for him to be a certain way, just by virtue of him being involved in these sports-like communities. And, you know, the, <clears throat> the Free to Learn book talks a lot about like pickup games versus, you know, organized sports and how in organized sports, you've got like one adult telling all the kids exactly how to move their bodies to make, to score. And so it's been really hard. He's also been a part of this um, for a school for so long. And um, I feel like I've been influencing him, inv inviting him to think about things in other ways. But he's just, that's his, that's his true nature. And I've, tr I mean, I've read so many sports books with him. Like I have spent time leaning into his um, interests but I'm just wondering if you have any tips or support on how I can kind of balance that for him more yeah. or insight. Yeah, I, I know my, my first thought is something I say a lot to myself still with my kids and, and maybe more so now that my kids are in their thirties is um, I, I don't want to have hopes and dreams for my kids. For sure. Right. And so I uh, like, and I try hard to just like, they are who they are, right? And they get to be who they want to be. And um, 
right? And that, but it's a, it's a way that we, you know, as a parent, it's a way that we think about our kids. It's like, I, you know, you see something in your kid and you're like, oh, well, my, my hope is, is that they could, you know, develop this skill. I see parents write it all the time on their application, right? My hope is that my child, you know, is going to lean into their uh, artistic and creative side. Mm -hmm. Like, well, yeah, but they're going to do what they're going to do. So I don't, I, you know, like, I, I think all we can do as parents is be ourselves and like continue to talk about the things that are important to us, right? Like do what you're doing, right? Like lean into the things that, you know, your, your young person is interested in, but also talk about like the downsides of that, right? Like, but not necessarily to them in that way, right? So, but allow them to see the, the, the struggles of, you know, the, the situations that come with that. I don't know. Does that, that's probably what you're doing already though. Yeah, <clears throat> these just like these systems of like that really emphasize masculinity, right? Yeah. And yeah. sometimes those are hard, like to write a check for $700 for him to play football, yeah. right? And know that I'm like investing in a system that feels uncomfortable to me. I go to every game, I get him to every practice, but like yeah. also yeah. just have this like gnawing, I wish that he had offsetting influences more yeah well you, you can you get to say what how you like how you participate as a parent as a person so you you could you know I, I think there were things that I, I like I didn't let my kids have any uh, pet snakes like that can't do it right and so it's like I'm not sure I could you know support everything that my kids came along and said they were interested in Right. It's like, yeah, no, I, I, I personally can't do that. Right. And so that, that's about me. That's not about you. Right. But that's about me. So maybe there's, there's places where you can, um, you know, have a boundary for yourself. Right. I don't know, Brooklyn, you have some thoughts? Oh, I was just wondering if they were old enough or had enough interest in current events to kind of like follow like other like critical issues around it that weren't, weren't mm -hmm. necessarily like, don't do this or not, but like, look at the intricacies around like the NFL's policy around concussions and long-term yeah. mm -hmm. uh, health results. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. So like, I'm just wondering if there's a way to just like bring more complexity to his interests that might like kind of mm -hmm. assuage your, mm -hmm. the fears, not your fears, mm -hmm. but just fears in general. And then I just really mm -hmm. um, feel for you as somebody who would also have a really hard time supporting football as a parent. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Solidarity. <laughs> Brooklyn I love that because yeah. yes the whole um like current events were just now getting to the place where he can kind of read that level at that yeah. level and there was a kid a guy who just was first draft pick uh for the NFL this year and he was on NPR because he like killed two people while he was driving and I was like read this yeah. article like this yeah. is the kind of culture yeah. and, it, and it just it was I appreciate you um remember reminding me of that because those are those are there's, very helpful there's and there's some, some podcasts and things like that they might be like oh, good oh if you have any resources for me send them my way I would love them okay yeah 